a lot of men, black men in particular, date white women because one, they're anti-black, they have internalized racism, and two, a lot of them feel like moving up in the world requires being with, dating, marrying a white woman because they are of a higher social class. Black people who are anti-black, mostly men, tend to have mixed children because they want to soften the features in themselves that they hate. So I want to talk about the passport bros. I'm just a little confused. So in a world where we live in a hookup culture, where, you know, dates aren't really planned like that, you don't really get phone calls, there's a lot of texting, a lot of convenience, a lot of lazy dating. Now, I'm supposed to believe there's like this movement of men who are specifically getting passports, taking time off work, taking time out of their leisure and going to another country to maybe, maybe find a girlfriend or a wife, you know, because nothing's guaranteed. So now you're putting in all this effort to maybe find somebody that's most likely going to be with you just for your money and your resources, which... From what I'm hearing, a lot of men don't like that. First of all, no one is forcing any woman to believe about the passport bros being a thing, if anything. Most men just want modern women to stay the heck out of our business. She is talking about women overseas using men for money, fair enough. I will play the game. Let's say that women overseas only want to use the bros for money. What is the difference between them and women in the West? In the West, women want a man who is over six feet tall makes six figures a year, and what not. Ideally, all women want that kind of man, a man who is better than them in every conceivable way, which means that the man will have to deal with a woman who is shorter, weaker, poorer, and probably dumber. But the difference between women overseas and women in the West is that women overseas at least provide wifely duties in order to bring some balance in the exchange of value, and they are more feminine and fit. While on the other hand, the only things that most women in the West provide are, disrespect, nagging, a bad attitude, they don't abide to traditional female gender roles but they want the man to abide to traditional male gender roles, and more often than not, they come with a child, or children fathered by another man, or other men. Yeah, needless to say, the choice is clear. A lot of men, black men in particular, date white women because, one, they're anti-black, they have internalized racism, and two, a lot of them feel like moving up in the world requires being with, dating, marrying a white woman because they are of a higher social class. Black people who are anti-black, mostly men, tend to have mixed children because they want to soften the features in themselves that they hate. What I'm realizing is that women, especially black women, are a special kind of stupid. So if I'm making 200000 and you're making 50000 that's problematic. So I don't, I don't want to be the primary breadwinner. What is your you know, minimum that you would consider? The minimum would probably be about a hundred, and that's, and that's half of my, that's half of my salary. Is there a minimum number? Uh, at least a quarter million. So normally I hear a hundred k. So a hundred k wouldn't be good enough for you. Uh, no. 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 Absolutely not. She said, absolutely not. Get the French toast out of here. Hey, y'all. <laughs> I honestly just woke up, but like, I'm going to keep the theme going here with this like bold glamour filter. I honestly don't think it's cute. It's weird on me. But like, anywho, this comment right here is exactly why black women feel the way that they feel. You're telling me that you can go overseas and fully have the influence um, and inspiration to support a woman in totality of another culture, but not your own. Mind you, historically, when have we seen a black woman not contribute or carry her weight in a relationship? That's what y'all know us for, is being build bears also, nobody's begging you to do anything. You just seem like you don't like black women. Sorry, that's the vibe I get. That's the vibe she's getting.
Well, somebody better tell her that. Nobody gives a hoot about which vibe she's getting. Women want a man who is over six feet tall, makes six figures a year, and whatnot. Basically, women want a man who is better than them in every aspect, so, who is really looking for a Build-A-Bear? I'm gonna try to sum up what I was actually trying to articulate in the most effective way possible. Concerning the passport bros, you feel me? <laughs> First of all, I don't think people understand that it's never black women that are the ones that are like, oh my God, we're, we're just, you know, we don't, mm -mm. we've always had to be okay on our own. So this whole thing about jealousy is baloney. If it's below her, why the hell is she talking about it? This is just sad. They all try to act tough and distant, but they never miss an opportunity to talk about men's business. It's baloney. It's mind you, it's not the Western women that are trying to keep anyone around. They just this is a group of people that felt the need to broadcast unnecessary information that none of us really are concerned about. Like we're all living in a reality where we're trying to survive. When something is none of your concern, you don't talk about it. You don't waste your time and energy trying to get your point across. I think the real problem is certain women are no longer going to be manipulated because they have been everything to their partners. And I think that's where we're at because in the Western culture, like it is favored for people to be sexually immoral, for them to be promiscuous, to gain favor, to having things that they need. So, um, in a sense, I would say that men are also partly accountable uh, for their, um, for the access that they have, including, you know, easier access like social media. Um, there's a lot of factors at play in regard to this movement as to why people feel as if they are unlucky in certain areas. My God, the lack of accountability. Basically, she is saying that the reason why most women in the West are 304s is because of men. Women are the ones who choose who gets to get laid but somehow, men are still responsible for the fact that most women decide to bang their way through life. Make it make sense. Also, if you're a person of faith, the Bible says, a man that findeth a wife finds a good thing. So maybe you're not finding a wife because maybe you aren't an Ephesians 5 man? That's another question I have. Like... You just expect your wife to be everything to you and you're not going to, you know, uphold that standard. You're not going to um, sacrifice anything to. Okay, enough of this crap. And here she is talking about the Bible, and she clearly has no idea of what she is talking about. And yes, the Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. But the Bible is not talking about any wife. The Bible is talking about a Proverbs chapter 31 kind of woman, a woman of virtue, a woman who knows how to take care of the house, a woman who knows how to take care of her husband, her children, and her community. Not a dumbass who jumps on TikTok first thing in the morning. She is talking about the man being an Ephesians chapter 5 kind of man. This is what Ephesians chapter 5 says concerning the topic. I will start at verse 22 since that when it starts to talk about marriage, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. 23. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. 24. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. 25. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. 26. To make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. 27 and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. 28. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. 29. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. 30. For we are members of his body. 31. For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. 32. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ in the church. 33. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, 
and the wife must respect her husband. This is the kind of women that you see flocking in churches when they get close to the wall. They use the Bible to shame men into doing what they want. She is talking about the man being an Ephesians chapter 5 kind of man, but she forgot to mention that, before the Bible talks about what the man should be, it talks about what the woman should be. That should tell you what is supposed to come before what. This is just despicable, and sad. These women are so desperate that they have reached the level of using a holy book to shame men. Little tip. When you see women using the Bible to talk about things that men are doing for their own best interest in regards to romantic relationships with women, nine times out of ten, these women, either they have a high body count, or they have crashed into the wall, they are single, they are annoying, they have a bad attitude, they are plus size, or they are straight up all of the above. The disrespect from the African-American women, American women, when it comes to the password bros, you might ask, like, where did this start? What, why is this going on? They say that they're dusty. They're say that, they say they're losers. They're not worth keeping. So why are they speaking out about it? Well, it's because they're projecting. They are upset because they don't feel desired. Men are not approaching women or playing games with women like they used to. They've taken the red pill, they've woken up. And quite honestly, if I was a guy or if I had a son, I would advise him to go overseas.